Hey everybody, I'm John Bilvis, executive chef of Lula's Louisiana Cookhouse in gorgeous Owasso, Michigan during this pandemic. And guess what? We are ramping up to get this place back open. Keep our fingers crossed that we can do it when we plan. So, and we sure hope we see all of you when we do get reopened. Guess what? I got a great recipe for you today. Spaghetti allegricia, which is one of the four pastas, four, 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 the pastas of Rome that are the quintessential you know, essence of the city of Rome. The first one is carbonara. The, we've got cacio e pepe. I did um, bucatini alla marciana. And this is the fourth one. This is kind of a cousin that doesn't get talked about as much. And basically, it's like an alla marciana without the tomatoes or a, what's the other, carbonara without the eggs. Somewhere in the middle. So let's get in the kitchen. Let me show you how we make this. It's awesome. Here's everything you're gonna to need to make this fabulous spaghetti alla gricia. One pound of spaghetti, you could use bucatini, fettuccine, linguine, uh, penne, any kind of pasta you like. I prefer it with plain old good old spaghetti. I've got 10 ounces of guanciale. Now I've made this into batons. Guanciale you can find on Amazon or, any, or in any good Italian market. Uh, substitutes would be pancetta. And as a last resort, you could use American bacon. Uh, it wouldn't be spaghetti alla gricia anymore, but it sure would be good. One half a cup of white wine, about a teaspoon of coarse ground black pepper. You could use regular black pepper if that's all you got. A cup of Pecorino Romano. We're gonna use three quarters of a cup right into the pasta sauce and one quarter of a cup just to top the finished spaghetti and a little bit of olive oil. That's all it takes to make this fabulous spaghetti alla gricia. Okay, you purists. I know that there's no white wine in the standard, basic, everybody's recipe for spaghetti alla gricia. This recipe comes from Armando's near the Pantheon in Rome, like 100 yards from there. And they do use white wine and I like it, so I'm putting it in this recipe. So get over it. Okay, here we go. I'm bringing this water to a boil. Now, normally I would add a couple tablespoons of salt the guanciale and the pecorino have a lot of salt in it, so I've reduced that to just about a tablespoon of salt. And while that's coming to a boil, I'm gonna add just a little olive oil to my pan. And I'm gonna go ahead and start rendering the guanciale. I wanna give it just a couple minutes of head start on the pasta. We're gonna render this over a medium to medium low heat so that the meat doesn't burn while we're rendering the fat out. And I'm giving myself a head start with the guanciale. If we find that it's done too early, we'll just turn off the burner until we get the pasta done. I think my timing is pretty good. About three minutes before I throw the pasta in, I start the guanciale. Now that guanciale has been rendering for about three minutes, so it's time to throw in our pasta. While I continue to render, our guanciale. I read one recipe where they actually poured out the fat before they finished this dish and I thought, my God, why'd you throw all the flavor out? Now some people would probably stop the cooking right here because they want the guanciale soft. I like it a little crispier, so I'm gonna let it go for just another minute or two here. So now that's about how I like my guanciale and it's well rendered, you can see the fat. So I'm gonna go ahead and add our white wine, letting that cook out the alcohol. And then I'm gonna go ahead, then I'm gonna add just a small ladle of pasta water. And give that a good stir, make sure we got all that good flavor off the bottom. And my pasta is gonna be ready in about four minutes. So this is just about perfect. I'm just gonna let this simmer on low until we're ready to add the pasta. So we've got our sauce simmering. It's now been nine minutes on the pasta. I've tasted it and it's just a little al dente, which is exactly where I want it. I'm gonna go ahead and add it to our saute pan. We're gonna add one more small ladle of pasta water. I'm gonna stir that up until we see a nice sauce form. I'm gonna add our teaspoon of fresh ground coarse black pepper. I'm 
And that pasta now has absorbed almost all of that pasta water. So I'm going to turn off the burner, add our cheese, and stir like hell. Melting all that cheese nicely. I think in forming a really nice sauce. And that's all we need to do. I just have to go ahead and plate it. <laughs> these, these are kind of fun to make. Okay, thanks again for watching another exciting episode of Scratch Cook with John. We'll be back with lots of recipes from all around the world. Guess what? I am over a thousand followers. Now, I know in the big scope of things, there's people with billions of followers, but for me, a thousand, I'm kind of happy about. So thank you very much.